I went and DJed at this bar in Dawson called the King's Head. So big up uh, Natalia for inviting me. That was a very nice of her to invite me down there. But um, it was an interesting gig. Very, very interesting gig. I've got to say that. Very, very interesting gig. Um, it really did remind me of... Um, you know, you have those gigs, right? Where you kind of get reminded of your level. You kind of get reminded of like where you are in the kind of, you know, overall DJing pecking order. That was one of them, right? Because number one, you know, when you get called in to like cover these such events, it's, you know, usually last minute or come because, you know, you're the last person they probably think about. So, you know, you, you got to take that um, dent to the ego. And then secondly, when you have to play for a crowd that necessarily you're not very that attuned with or you don't you're not very used to playing in front of you haven't been to any of the parties and stuff it gets really difficult and i guess this kind of goes back to what a lot of djs would say i think i've listened to a lot of seth truxler interviews lately um or him talking at you know um the ib for music summit some uh red bull uh, is that red bull yeah red, red, those red bull masterclass sort of things um seth truxler has been talking about um, in the past, you know, a few years ago, he doesn't do as many of them this this time around, probably because he's so busy. But he mentioned quite a few times about just being active in the scene, right? That's how you get involved in music, like just just going out. And I think that's what I love about DJ. What I love about club culture. It still hasn't. You can't really replicate it on the internet in that regard, right? It hasn't really been done in a good way, um, or even in a way that makes any sort of sense. You still have to kind of go outside for the most part and talk to people and you know connect to people and make friends and stuff, and then you know. Um, little by little, um, you start to touch base with people. You might end up making your own label, uh, start your own brand, uh, start your own club night, open your own bar, open your own nightclub. It just it all, it all starts from the dance floor usually. And those those are some some of the best conversations you have. And sometimes on the way home, um, you know, in the toilets, like you have some of the best conversations that you like. And some of the stuff that really opens your eyes to to what you kind of want to do in the future, or the stuff that you don't want to do. Right? It's all it's all a good testing ground. But the, mo the most important thing about it is to go out and really experience these events, right? Go out and club, go out and have a good time. Listen to what the DJ is playing. Don't stand in Shazam stuff. Just listen, just feel the vibe, right? It's just like understand what's kind of going on, how they're taking them on a journey. And you can really start to differentiate between, you know, objectively what is a good DJ and what is a bad DJ, right? The one that's able to kind of read the crowd and take them on a journey up and down, peaks and valleys, whatever lucky. So with that being said, when I went to go DJ at the King's Head to kind of go and cover, I was very aware that, I was not, I was very aware that I wasn't very, I, I wasn't very aware of what those people wanted me to play, right? Because I hadn't been around those kind of clubs, right? And if I'm saying these people, I'm like, people that go to nightclubs to listen to specifically Afro beats and hip hop, right? And it's not the fact that they listen to Afro beat hip because I listen to it all the time on my, on my own iPhone and stuff when I go and work out and stuff. There's a particular kind of brand of that kind of music that gets played all the time. That's very uninspired. That's a bit flat, um, that you know, the, you know the kind of sets that they do. It's annoying where they just they mix the tunes in after a minute and a half, right? They don't let. I don't know. It's just annoying. It's just the same sort of formulaic approach. It's not really interesting. So those kind of parties are quite hard to DJ at because you know a half an hour set feels like an hour because you probably ran through I don't know fifty songs by the time you've played a half an hour set, which is not the way I like to go about things. I like to kind of you know long things out, drag things out a little bit. Maybe play an instrumental, loop stuff a bit in a little bit. Maybe play an acapella. So I wasn't really sure how they respond to it. So I, I packed as much as I could in my USB. I did what I could, but nowadays I don't. I don't panic with my USB stick and my playlist. I used to kind of panic a lot and be stressed out and download everything. Now I don't do that. I just download what I can, and if if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I'm not gonna go out there and try, you know, download everything that I need in terms of to play because I end up not playing most of it anywhere. So I end up rocking up to the King's Head. And if you're not familiar with the King's Head, it's this, um, it's this uh, private members club in Dawson, right? And it's a bit weird, right? Because, you know, it's not, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. It's not Shoreditch House, right? I don't think they would, you know, lie to us and say Shoreditch House either. But, you know, it's, it's a pretty decent place. Um, It's kind of got some really interesting interior design. Um, it's a little bit confusing in that regard because each floor looks completely different from the other one. Um, maybe maybe in the daytime it looks different, but in night I couldn't really tell the difference. I could tell no. Maybe in the daytime you could tell the difference, but at night it just all looks it all look you know like it'd been designed by different people. I don't know if that makes any sense. But um, yeah, so I rocked up to the to the King's Head in Dawson. I ended up taking a train to um, Dawson King Dawson Junction and walking down. And you know it was quite, I was, it did a quite a good move, right? Mood because I passed by Vig the club formerly known as Visions. That was looking like it was popping off. I went past the Haggerston. I went past the Beer and Burger place. Went past um, a few other joints. Forgot what their names are. And you know those general people around having a good time. But you could tell the vibe was different. Dawson isn't what it used to be. It wasn't as jumping as it was, you know, in days gone by. You know, it would have been fucking 
full of people like me just you know chatting shit on the street making noise running around and just act like a fool but this time around it looked pretty you know pretty tame so i rocked up to the king's head and the king's head sort of like this weird little pub thing it's got a door that you can't really open you kind of have to knock on it um i went to go open it and it wouldn't open so then they had to open it from the inside the security guards open it from the inside and then you've kind of got this like you know weird sort of like taxidermy stuff all over it you kind of go in, give your name to the receptionist. If it's not in there, they probably just, you know, you note it down on the sheet and then you kind of go up and play. Um, and I get in there and um, well, let's maybe talk about more about the club, right? So this is the, this is the club itself. It's on the screen now. I'm going to put it on the screen for you guys to see. But it's called The King's Head. Um, it's a Flash website. Of course, it's a Flash website. It's not really looking that great. Oh, my God. What the hell is this? This site is horrendous. It's a flash of it and I can't see how much it is or the price or anything. Okay, cool. What's on? Anything? Okay, there we go. We've got something there. So this is basically essentially what they have on, right? The kind of parties, right? They have the House of Osiris, Asylum on the 19th. Let's see what the, this party is on the 19th. Don't know what kind of music that is, but 21 and over, Black Moses. So they have club nights on there so that you can go to and have a good time in. But for the most part, it's a private members club. I think... It's three fifty the membership or something that you pay, but I got to be honest, man. The clientele that on the Saturday were, you know, it wasn't the best. It was kind of full of quite of a lot of people that I wouldn't want to spend any more time with outside of the time that I was there. Um, again, m not not their fault because a lot of it was there's a lot of like private there was a lot of like private fashion week after parties happening at the at the spot. Um, really playing the same old music again and again and again. Uh, but you know what can you do? Um, that is the King's Head, right? Private Members Club in Shore, uh, more so in Dawson. I'm not wouldn't, wouldn't really say Shore this, but you know they got they got to do what they have to do in that regard. But um, let's see how much. I think it's like three fifty. The King's Head prices. King's Head membership members club. Let's see how much they got the price on here. Price. Uh, cool membership is there, yeah. So here's a membership. Um, so as you can see from the screen, the price, the membership price, and um, this is from 2018. I'm assuming it's the same. This for this time for under 28, for under 27, sorry, it's 200 quid, and an annual membership uh, for adults is 325, which is not too bad, right? You got a monthly membership 200 requests. So I guess if you're that way inclined, right, or you want to go, because I've I've mentioned before previously on the podcast that I want I wouldn't mind actually being part of a private members club just because you know you kind of lack places to go to um, and just hang out, right, with your friends, just grab a drink and chat a bit of shit. Um, that's a bit a bit of a nicer venue than maybe Weatherspoons or then maybe a, a cool cocktail bar. Maybe it opens a bit later than a cool cocktail bar, right? So you want something in the middle of that. Um, and that, any prep pro members club kind of allow you to do so. Now you have to justify that m kind of money and, you know, 350 is not a lot. I guess the, Ace, the Shoreditch House is probably a lot more money, like, you know, having to pay like a grand something to just justify spending that much money. You have to kind of go out a lot. But 350 is not too bad. I wouldn't mind doing it. And again, what time does it close? It closes at, um, yeah, 5 a.m. on a Friday and a Saturday and 4 a.m. on a Thursday. So it's it's perfectly fine. You can perfectly do that and have a good time. And, you know, and since in, in Dawson, you can get home pretty easily for the most part. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, that being said, I got inside. I couldn't find where I was meant to DJ because obviously I've been told to I've been told to help out cover with Natalia and I've, I'm assuming she hadn't told the birthday girl you know that kind of poor communication stuff and again is she, what's she gonna do call her up and tell her some random guy that like he's gonna play she just would have made it awful but just got a bit got a bit dicey so I, got, I get in there the main bar is pretty nice it's got like a u-shaped bar which is quite cool with tables on the side i think i like the main floor bar the best it's kind of got a good vibe in it but again it was full of a lot of like fashion week kind of you know pretentious people in there that were you know a bit stuck up but you know what can you do they are who they are so i, I did my best to kind of avoid eye contact and not kind of talk to them and then i went to the bit where the, the cloakroom was asked so where the dj booth she was right around the corner went around the corner so a dj booth and i bumped into a friend said hi i couldn't find my my my, my dj gig place finally said oh trek upstairs went upstairs to the first floor and I went to go check if that was the room I was meant to play in, right? So as I'm about to approach the door, security goes, hey, hey, security goes, hey, you can't go in there. I was like, why? I was like, right, right. okay, cool. Well, I think I might be DJing here um, for this um, girl that's, you know, meant to be, so meant to be a third, birthday party. He's like, oh, what's her name? I was like, I don't know, right? So already, you're starting already this fucking circle of bullshit, right? Because again, I, I guess I, I assumed when I went in there, it would be one bar. So I'd know exactly who, I mean, it'd just be like that. There's only one DJ booth, that's where I'm playing. But I guess the fact that it's three floors made it difficult. So security guard's cool. He's like, okay, cool. No worries. Give me as much info as you can. And I'll go over to the girl and find out what's going on. He goes up to the girl and says, oh, yeah, there's a guy here. He's meant to be DJ. I think he talks to her. 
the girl comes over and she's immediately got that kind of like, you know, ridiculous, like she's got that annoying pissed off face already straight away. Right. She hasn't seen me. I haven't spoken to her. I've just come up. I'm more dressed up like I'm at TJ. I'm not wearing like shitty clothes. I've made the effort to kind of look a bit smart. Right. She immediately comes up to the door. She's really like, got that kind of scrunched up face. Like, oh, well, we all set for DJs actually. We're all right. It's like, motherfucker, I'm not asking to DJ your party randomly. I didn't just come here. I'm, I'm, uh, and I was like, oh. I had to kind of just ignore the kind of, you know, frostiness in the beginning. I was like, look, um, yeah, I know I'm not, I'm not coming on the whim to come to DJ a party. I was, I was seeing whether or not I was told to come. Are you the first, are you having the first party? party? I was like, no. I was like, okay, do you know this girl? I just showed a text message in the I was like, no, no, no. I said, that's not it. Maybe it's somewhere else. Then she kind of calmed down a bit because she realized, you know, I wasn't there to kind of, you know, hood, try to jump on her wave. But just thinking, imagine being that person. Imagine just being immediately like standoffish. I get it. Maybe, no, I get it. Maybe that place in general, day to day, is full of wankers, right? And she's always had to kind of put up with somebody coming in saying, "Oh, can I come?" Like it's just, it's a no. I get it. It must be annoying, but relax, man. Relax, relax, relax. At least give me at least give me the opportunity of being a wanker before you immediately just start being frosty straight away. But anyway, she was frosty. She calmed down a bit. She was nice, and then the security guard kind of helped me. I said, "Hey, go upstairs and check, right?" So I'll go to the second floor. Go to the second floor. It's even weirder. So even full of more taxidermy, and it's a tiny, tiny room. And it's full of like, I don't know, six or seven people that are clubs obviously dressed up for some sort of private party. It's obviously not there. The, the There's a nice girl in there too. A nice girl, considering the other one was completely, you know, a bit of a bitch. But this one was much nicer. And she was like, oh, don't worry. Um, let me help you out. She steps out of the room. She's like, oh, where is it? Would you know? She's talking. And then she's like, oh, actually, no. I know where it is. It's definitely in the basement. I'm like, there's a fucking basement. He's like, yeah, yeah, there's a basement downstairs. Like, okay, cool. So I went all the way back down again where I was on the ground floor. Went down to the basement. And the basement's not easy to find. This is all the king's head. It's sort of like near the DJ booth. So it's a bit, you know, the bit, you know, when you're in a, in the, you know, when you go to a rave and you go to a nightclub, the only place you don't want to be at, especially in a place that you're uncomfortable at, is near the DJ booth, right? Because that's where all the cool hips of people are. That's where everyone, was, you know, it's just a bit weird. So I went to, back to the near the booth again and it's a little secret door to the right. I have to turn into the right and you get to DJ booth. You go downstairs to the basement. I went down to the basement and a good thing about that place is that it's sound insulated really well. You can't hear anything in the other kind of floors. Like, honestly, I didn't, I didn't hear, I didn't, I couldn't even hear there was a basement. You couldn't hear anything. Go downstairs to the basement and it's this weird sort of like strip club thing looking wise. I don't know if it was like a strip club or like a really tacky Soho nightclub. Um, it's essentially like a big massive black pit um, with, and then on the edges are seats, quote unquote seats. And then on the top, there's a DJ booth. Um, and then the, there's a balcony on top of that with another amount of seats. Seats everywhere. The most seats I've seen in my life in a nightclub. And again, I think because I'm so used to going to techno parties, having a good time there, I've never really... Yeah, because I'm so used to going to techno parties, I've never really seen the need to have a seats everywhere in the club, right? So when you go to those kind of clubs, it's like a bit of a throwback. Like, oh shit, I remember that's where we used to be, right? When we used to go to Marketplace, when we used to go to... Oh, I forgot the one in um, Soho, but there's a few others that we used to go to where the, the game was to kind of see how long you could stand up on the chair for, act a fool, get the girls to look at you, and then the security guard tell you to jump. Yeah, I mean, it's that kind of to and fro game. So I remember that. So I'm in there and I'm like, okay, cool. And the crowd, of course, is nothing like any crowd I've kind of played in front of. It's full of loads of like really, you know, hot um, girls wearing those kind of like, you know, um, tighty dresses on, you know, those slinky dresses that don't hide anything. Um, loads of guys with like really expensive watches and belts. So I'm like, oh my god, how am I gonna how am I gonna play in here, man? Like, again, it's not my kind of place. I'm not a snob. I'm not. It's not like it's underneath me. But I also don't want anyone to have a bad time, right? I don't want to ruin their night because they obviously this is obviously their thing, right? This is what they do. They go out to these kind of parties, and I just don't want to be the DJ that comes on there. Is is a bit is a bit annoyed he's there and just starts fucking done in the dance, right? Dead in the dance, like clear the dance. Floor. I don't want to be that dude. I want to allow and i want to kind of let them have a good time too i want to i want to aid in the good times so eventually um i kind of you know i kind of get over myself and i figure out okay cool what was the best thing to do and i'm just staring around thinking wow what are we gonna play and as dj is playing he's playing everything i have all the songs that i downloaded he's playing every single one he's fucking smashing it um in his eyes or in that in their eyes it wasn't you know that much of an inspired set in my regard but you know for what they for that standard he's playing quite cool and then Natalia brings up a great idea. She's like, look, let's just play back to back. So we end up playing back to back and it works out pretty well. I end up having loads of like newer stuff. Um, and she ended up having loads of cl old school classics. And then we end up going back to back and just like smashed it really all the way through. And it worked out pretty well in the end, right? In the end, we I think we did a good job. But 
it just made me wonder number one why the girl even bothered getting us in right i think if you're having a birthday party and you're doing that kind of thing that kind of music why not just get the best of the best that like, kill it in that kind of scene there's no need to bring us in if you are going to bring people like me in you might as well get me to play other stuff right because the moment i played candy everyone went crazy right it was as a good vibe but i think yeah like why would you get us to play if if i would i would much rather it would probably make more sense if you got us to play like a disco set a house set right an indie set i don't know a disc a funk set that would make more sense right than us to try and compete with people who play that kind of music week in, week out. I guess that's kind of what I'm get, trying to say. So again, it was uh, not the best of sets, not the most enjoyable, but also a learning experience, also a humbling experience, and also an experience that kind of let me see that, okay, I've I've matured a lot because I'm not, I'm not going in there with an ego. I'm not going in there like, you know, oh, I'm better than this. I'm going in there like, you know, I'm of service. Even if it's something I don't want to do, I'll try my best to do it. But it's also got me thinking a little bit, tiny bit, like sometimes saying yes to everything isn't a good idea, right? Because it's not really worth your time to go, you know, imagine if I went there and embarrassed myself and did a really piss poor job, right? You, That's the only impression you could ever make on someone. And that's that's the impression they have on you now, right? Even if I played in other genres really well, they might just think you've always been shit. So yeah, interesting experience. I won't do it again. I don't think so. Um, I probably will avoid it. Or if I can, what I will do, I think going forward is maybe practice um, to put together like a 30 minute set of that kind of music right and just smash it in my head just have like a killer 30 to 40 minute hip-hop set that i know will just wreck any dance right that'll probably 30 to 50 minute set that's what i probably think something i might end up doing just having your back pocket it's always handy to have your back pocket right i think every dj should have an, an hour of each genre that they can actually just go to and just like doom, 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 sling it out and absolutely destroy i think so um and then the other things you can just freestyle with but yeah interesting set at the king's head again not my kind of private members club but again 350 for the year or 325 for the year i think is a pretty good deal but i'm just not sure of the clientele man if i want to be in that kind of place you know so bit bit sketch but you know what can you do